Hebrews 11, we'll start reading from verse number 1. The Bible tells us in verse number 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen are not made by things which are visible. Let's stop there for a second and take a look at the first three verses. Here I want you to notice what the scripture is saying, that faith is the foundation of creation. Because the Bible tells us that by faith we understand that the walls were formed by the word of God. So that the things which are not seen are not made with things which are visible. If we keep reading, so the first thing I want you to notice from that passage of scripture, for the first three verses of scripture, there are so many things there, but I just want to notice one thing there. That faith is the foundation for creation. Every created thing, everything new that comes about is as a result of faith. You believe so much in a particular business that has not started. But because you have so much faith in your ability or in the business proposal or in the business idea, you begin to, you begin to uh, kind of... Uh, Begin to invest your resources, your time, and your energy. And before you know what's happening, the business is established and it comes to part. It basically is saying what the scripture is trying to make us to understand is that everything that we see today is as a result of faith. Faith is the foundation for the created order that you are seeing in every life, in every circumstances. Let's keep reading. Let's go to verse number four. The Bible says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speak. Here we see again the action of faith of Abel resulted in the offering of sacrifice. The Bible is telling us that where there is faith, or where faith is present, sacrifice can, is inevitable. In other words, where there is confidence in a desired future, when you believe that something is possible, you are willing to give up what it takes to see that reality come to pass. Okay? That's what it means. Because faith, the action of faith always results, is as a result of what? Of sacrifice that an individual believes, that an individual makes, because that individual believes in the reality of that particular fair, of that particular thing that they are trusting the Lord for. So where there is confidence of a desired outcome, people are willing to give up their time, their energy, and their resources to see that particular desired future come to pass. And that's why the Bible says, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than, and, and then he obtained a witness that he was righteous. The action of faith is always backed up by sacrifice. Because when you believe that tomorrow will be better, you are willing to pay the price for that tomorrow to come to pass. Let's keep reading. Verse number 5. Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says, By faith, Enoch was taken away, so that he did not see death, and was not found, because God, took, God had taken him. But for before he was taken, he had his testimony. That he, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So here the Bible is talking about that where there is faith, pleasing God becomes possible. Where we know that God is willing and able to do what he said he would do in our lives, pleasing and obeying God becomes a lot easier. If somebody tells you that I'm going to give you X amount of money and you know that person has the ability and he has that willingness and that person loves you and you know that person is going to do it. Whatever that person tells you to do, it's not difficult for you to do because you know that person loves you. You know he has the capacity and he has the ability and there is a willingness even to give you what you want. The same thing when you find that when you are working with the Lord. Bible makes us to understand that faith, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. You know what? Enoch trusted the Lord so much. Believed in the capacity of the Almighty God to do whatever the Lord had promised to do. So Enoch walked with the Lord and the Lord took him. 
In other words, the more you know the person that you are working with, the more you are more convinced of his ability to answer your prayer, pleasing that individual, pleasing that God becomes a lot easier. So we have seen three things now. The first thing we see is faith as the foundation of creation. Number two is faith as an action that results in sacrifice. Number three is faith that produces a desire to please the Almighty God. Let's go to verse number 7. Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible tells us there. It said, By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. Here we see the faith's that faith prompts us into action. Faith motivates us into action. When you believe something, when you are convinced about something, it influences the way you behave. Faith informs our action. Faith is the foundation of every step that many of us take. You may not believe it, but that is the reality. Because we act on what we believe. Many of us who are sitting in the room right now have heard me say this a million times. That if you do not believe the strength of the chair you are sitting on, you will not sit down. If you don't believe that the chair is strong enough to carry your weight, you will not sit down. So faith, every action that we take is a result of some kind of faith. Okay, But if you don't believe something will happen, you will never do it. If you don't believe that something, you know, if you don't believe in a particular cause of action, you will not take that action. So the Bible says, by faith, Noah was moved with godly fear to prepare an ark when he was divinely warned. Others probably heard about that fear, about that particular warning, but nobody responded because they did not believe it. But because Noah believed, the Bible says that Noah was willing to take the necessary action. Now, I want to pause for a second so that you can understand something. The question here is not if we have faith. All of us have faith. Okay? All of us have faith. So that's not the real issue. The real issue is the object of our faith. What faith, What do we have our faith in? Okay? What do we have our faith in? Some people have faith in, 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 in human. Some have faith in, in, in system. Some have faith in government. Some have faith in one particular society or the other. The thing is, every one of us have faith. It's a question of what you have that faith in. So what, you know, but because, because whatever you have faith in will determine the kind of action that you take. What do you do? What do you have faith in? That's what determines the kind of action you take. If you have faith in the system, you will act based on the action or based on your faith on the system. If you have faith in the financial world, if you have faith in a particular, in a particular organization, it will dictate the way you operate. The Bible tells us that Noah was moved with godly fear to prepare an ark when he received a divine warning because he had faith in the word and the warning that the Lord Almighty gave him. Let's go to verse number 8. Verse number 8 tells us, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called out to the place which he would not he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heir with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which had foundation, whose builder and maker is God. In other words, we see here another attribute of faith, which is the faith that help, that produces obedience. When you believe something that an individual tells you, when that person gives you an instruction, obedience becomes easy. But if I don't believe a word that is coming out of your mouth, and you ask me to do something, I will not even move. Because I don't believe you. So faith is, you know, is a, is a form, you know, obedience is a function of faith. When we truly believe in God and God gives us a specific instruction, obedience becomes easy because you believe him. You know that he cannot, tra he, he cannot lie to you. You know he cannot lead you astray. Okay. He becomes, because you know that he will give, you know, the one who gives you that instruction is trustworthy. We have faith in the person who is speaking to us because we trust them. 
That's what happened. And when you trust somebody, you are willing to do what that person tells you to do. And that is why you wake up in the morning. You make up, you go to work. You get all your job and all the effort that you make. Somebody pays you, okay? After you have worked maybe every week or every two weeks, at the end of the day, somebody gives you a piece of paper, okay? And it says, go to the bank. And you don't question it, okay? But if I should, if you should come to church and I give you a piece of paper, I say, Pastor, what is the wrong with you? Because you don't trust me, don't give you a check that will be worth of your two weeks job. But somebody from your HR or from your accounting office gives you a paper and writes your name on it, puts a number on top of that money, say, go to that building, they will give you money. And you go. Because you believe that person has the capacity. You believe and you trust that person that they are good for what they have given you. The same thing with the Almighty God. Faith, sorry, obedience is a function of faith. Okay? When we do not believe or trust or have confidence in the person that is talking to us, it becomes very difficult for us to obey whatever instruction they are telling us. And that is why when you see people who are trying to sell something, yeah, as soon as they bring in that thing and they say, this biro, you know what it, this pen, you know what it does? You don't even need to hold it when you're writing. All you have to do is put it on your book and it starts writing for you. You know that is a cock and bull story. You don't believe it. If they now say they want to sell it for whatever amount, you say, okay, maybe you'll come back tomorrow. Because you don't believe that person, you're not going to take the action that they're asking you to take. But when you believe, you take action. When you believe, obedience becomes a, a very easy. Abraham believed God and the Bible says it was as a result of that he obeyed God, he left his own country and did what he was supposed to do. Let's go again, verse number 11. In verse number 11, we see the creative power of faith. The creative power of faith. Look at verse number 11. Say, By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was past age. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Because Abraham took God at his word. Okay? Because Abraham considered the faithfulness of the Almighty God. The Bible now makes us to understand that Abraham was able to tap into the creative power of faith. And was able to do that which is impossible. And then by the time you get to verse number 16, number 13 through verse number 16, we see there the we see the hope that faith produces in the life of an individual. I've always said, joked about this that anytime you are expecting big money, it, it changes the way you think, it changes the way you behave, it changes the way you are you, you carry yourself. Somebody walks into this room and says, Okay, just this Friday, you are the people who are here. I'm giving each of you X amount of money. If some people, the, the excitement of some people will cause them to even begin to make promises. For those of us who remember that song from Nigeria, you know, Jimmy Solanke's song. You know, when the money comes, you say, you begin to say, yeah, give me this one, give me this one. Because you know there's money. Or you know that there's money coming. When you have, faith has a way of producing hope in the life of an individual. Okay? And so, you will see, because of the fact that there's hope, in verse number 13, the Bible says, all these people that had faith. Some of them did, did, some of them died without seeing the result, but they had hope. All these died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called, in my, if they have called to mind that country which, which they had come from, which they had come out of, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared them a city. In other words, as soon as you have faith and you believe God, or you believe whatever somebody tells you, it creates a hope, an expectation, and that expectation is what keeps you going. Just like when you are broke and then somebody tells you, oh, I'll give you money on Friday. And that day was Wednesday. You don't mind. They saw your daughter, your son, or somebody around you. They say, don't worry, on Friday I'll take care of you. You begin to promise people, on Friday I'll take care of you. You have not seen the money. You don't know whether the money is going to come. But you know you keep promising because you have hope that something is coming. And then in verse number 17, you see faith, you know, you see the resurrection power of faith. The Bible tells us that by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he... 
And he who had received promise offered up his only begotten son. Why? Because he believed that God can raise him up. If you go to verse 18 and 19, you talk about the power, the blessings that faith produces. And that's when you read, you begin to see the blessings of Abraham, the blessings of uh, Jacob, the blessings that Joseph received, and all the other good things that happened. We're going to stop in verse number 22 there. But before we go, and I want you to understand, just a quick report of the actions of faith that you have seen from verse 1 to that verse number 22. The first one is the creative power of faith. The second one is the action of faith. The third one is the pleasing power of faith that is produced in the life of those who believe God. The obedient power of faith that is produced when you believe God. The hopeful power of faith when you believe God. The resurrection power of faith when you believe the word of God. And the blessings power of faith that comes in the life of those people who trusted him. The question is, why have I taken time to look at all this? Why have I taken time to go through the prayer of scripture to look at the power of faith? The reason I'm saying this is because our walk with God is a walk of faith. Walking with God is by faith. The Bible said God is a spirit. And those who walk with him will be God. They walk with him in spirit and in truth. If there is a God that you can see is no longer the God of the Bible. Okay, that's a different one. But the God of the Bible that we see is a spirit. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. God is a spirit and all those who will serve him, they, are, they serve him in spirit and they serve him in truth. So that's why I'm going through this whole exploit of faith. This whole attitude, the characteristic of faith and the actions of faith and how we can connect with our faith. Our walk with God is a walk of faith. And the walk of faith is an engaging walk. In other words, faith is not just by talking. Okay? Faith is not something that you talk about. Faith is something that you do. Faith is an action. Alright? Faith, because faith is an action, it provokes you to do something. If you believe me, you will do something to show that I believe you. If you read the book of James, the Bible says that somebody comes to you. He said that I'm destitute and I'm poor. And you say, go and be filled. He said, because I have faith. The guy look at you, are you crazy? Go and be filled. I told you I don't have money. I need money. But if somebody said, because I believe God, here is the money. It tells you there's an action that is involved. So our walk with God is a walk of faith. And that walk provokes action. That walk requires us to be engaged with the word of God. And so in James chapter 2, reading from verse number 17, the Bible says, Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So if you say you believe God and you are not doing anything, then you are dead. your faith is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have work. Show me your faith without your work and I will show you my faith by my work. Okay? I've given you the example before. Now let me use it again because it's a very practical example. When we talk about you, I, I come into this room and I say, those of you in this room, do you believe that this chair is good? You said yes. Do you believe that this chair is strong enough to carry you? You say yes. Yeah. Do you believe that when you sit on this chair, you are not going to fall down? You said yes. Yeah. Then sit on it. You say no, I believe. I say sit on it. You say no, I believe. Ah, please sit on it. No, no, no. Let me stand here. I believe it. Why? You, oh, no, I'm okay. The chair is good, but I'm not going to sit down. But the other person said, because I believe. That this chair is strong enough, here is a proof that I believe it, and I'm sitting down on it. So that's basically what the Bible is saying. Your faith is demonstrated by the things that you do, not the things you say. Your faith is demonstrated by the things that you do, not by the action, not by the words that you say. Anybody can say anything. Just like we talked about the chair. I can talk about how beautiful the chair is. I can talk about how wonderful the chair is. But if I'm not willing to sit on the chair, then I've not demonstrated my confidence in the chair. It's just like the same thing. If I tell you that ah, this particular plane is beautiful, it looks very nice, it is wonderful. Are you going to travel in the plane? You say no. Why would you want to recommend a plane that you are not going to travel in? That means I don't have confidence in the ability of the plane to get from point A to point B. So faith is something that requires your action. Faith is not passive. Faith is not, is not devoid of action. Faith is very active and is engaging. It involves you doing something. So when you say you have faith and there seems to be no involvement or engagement, then what you have is not faith. What you have is called wishful thinking. And believers do this all the time. We say, I'm praying, I'm believing God. What are you doing? You are not doing anything. You are not looking for a job. 
You are not doing this. You are not engaging yourself. You are not improving your business. You are talking about, I'm believing God. What you are waiting for is wishful thinking because it's not going to get you anywhere. You remember my favorite verse of the scripture. Whatever you lay your hands upon to do, shall what? Shall prosper. And if you don't lay your hands upon anything, nothing prospers. A million times zero is always what? Zero. Because it will not produce. But whatever you lay your hands upon, that is what you are giving to the Lord to do something with. And that's why that boy with the five loaves and two fishes, when he presented five loaves and two fishes, that was all the Lord Almighty wanted. Because the Lord does not need the five loaves and two fishes. He just wanted you to put something on the table. And that's why the Bible said that we are partners with the Lord. God is waiting for you to do something. Put something on the table. Just do anything. Give me an excuse to step into your situation. That's what the Lord is asking us. But if you don't give the Lord an excuse to step in by engaging the act of faith, then nothing happens. Okay? So when we, have, when we say we have faith and there seems to be no involvement or engagement, what we are doing is wishful thinking. What we are expecting is magic. And many people are in the church who are expecting magic. A person will not pray. A person will not go out to work. And <laughs> yes, he's expecting miracle. And then you begin to wonder, what kind of miracle are you going to get? Okay? The people where they pray every day, which means they go, miracle God, they are trusting God. Talk less of the person where they don't pray. That is a story for another day. But the thing is that if you are not engaged, what you find is that... You are, you are you are doing wishful thinking, or you are you know, or you are expecting you, know, you are trusting you know you are expecting magic to happen, and I say this because engaging your, your your faith requires direct engagement involvement for it to come alive. You have to be involved in something. Remember that widow that went to the, that went to uh, uh, Elijah, Elisha. Elisha asked her, "What do you have?" He said, "I don't have anything." He said, no, you got to, have, got to have something. You have to have something to prime the faith to bring it into action. Say, I have a bottle of olive oil. That's all you need. That's all you need. I need so You have to put something in the process. Not because God wants anything from you, but it's to be able to demonstrate that you are involved in the process. And the question is, how do you engage your faith? How do you engage your faith? How do you make sure that your faith is able to produce Number one, you engage your faith by getting to know the one who you say you have faith in. Okay? You have to get to know the person. For you to be able to trust him, you have to get to know him. If somebody says, okay, if you come to my company, I will give you X, Y, Z. You have to at least get to know where the company is. Get to know the individual. If the Lord is saying, ask and I will give unto you the hidden for your inheritance and the uttermost part for your possession, you have to at least get to know the God for you to be able to ask him. You cannot remain a stranger in his presence and be asking him questions. So you engage your faith, you make your faith active, number one, by getting to know the winner, know the one through you know, getting to know our God. Number two, by getting to know his promises, what he has made available for you. Because what you don't know that is present for you, you will end up not even possessing it. There are so many benefits that are available to the children of God, but because they don't know, they cannot access it. There are so many who are living in this country today, who there are so many benefits that are available to people that they don't even know. And because they don't know what happened, the benefit passed them by. There are things in the word of God that has made available for us. And until you understand that these things are meant for you, you may not be able to access them. So you need to know the God that you are serving. You need to know the promises that he has made available for you. Number four and number three, you need to start taking God at his word. Take him at his word. If he says, I am going to do X, Y, and Z, then say, well, okay, God, you say you are going to do X, Y, and Z, then do it, let me see. That's why he told you. He said, come, let us reason together. Though your sins may be as, you know, as red as crimson, they shall be as white as snow. Then you can now tell him and say, Lord, this is what you said concerning me. This is what you said concerning my children. This is what you said concerning my, you know, concerning my family, concerning the work of my hand. You need to be able to take him at his word. Because if you don't take him at his word, you are not, you have to present it back unto him. Bring me to remembrance. That's what he says. Not that God forgets. But just wanted to know how hungry you are. And then number four, start acting on that word by taking, by seeking opportunities to carry out that word. 
One thing I want you to understand is that every promise of scripture has a condition. Every promise of scripture. Everything that the Lord said he's going to do for you, there is always a condition attached to it. Salvation. He said, if you repent, then you will be saved. A man who refused to repent, you can do whatever you can pray from now to tomorrow. If you refuse to repent, you are not going to be saved. It's as simple as that. How do you get healed? He said, by faith, you will receive your healing. So, believe him. How do you get blessed? He said, give and it shall be given unto you. If you refuse to give, too bad. Okay? You can stand there and be knocking and be doing whatever, nothing happens. The point I'm making is that there is always something to do for you to enjoy the promise of scripture. There is always a condition attached to it. And as soon as you do what the Lord asks you to do, what you will find, what you have effectively done, is that you have committed the integrity of the Almighty God to fulfilling His words. I've given you this example before, and I'll give it to you again. A boy, a fa the father comes to the, side the, the room of his boy. I said, my son, if you clean this room, I'll give you $10. The boy said, okay. You're going to give me $10? He say, yeah, fine. Then he turns around. Daddy goes to work. Son comes back. Walk, clean, clean the place. Set up his room. Wash everything. Put everything in order. Daddy comes back from work and the son says, okay, but daddy, this is what's going on. You said if I clean my room, I get 10 bucks. Room is clean. Where's 10 bucks? The fact that the son has done what the father promised, what the son has effectively done is has committed the integrity of the father to taking action. If after cleaning the room, the father refused to give 10 bucks, it becomes a problem. Okay? Because next time, when the daddy says, Daddy, and when the daddy says to the boy, I need you to wash my car, I'll give you 20 dollars. Say, nah, that's what you said the last time. Okay? But if after the boy cleaned the room and daddy came back from work, and the boy challenged integrity. He said, Daddy, you said if I clean my room, I'll get, I'll get $10. Now the room is clean. Where's my $10? As soon as the father said, ah, good boy. Put his uh, uh, pulls out his wallet. Shell out $10 to the boy. I can tell you, if the, if the father tells the boy, jump and let your head touch the ceiling, you are getting $100. The boy will jump and tell, make his head touch the ceiling. Why? Because the father has proven his integrity. That's the same way, the way these things work. God continues to deliver when you act upon his word. You are able to challenge his integrity. You are able to call him and say, Lord, this is your word. This is what you said. Fulfill your word. That is the way you have to do your part for God to do his part. Faith is a function of action. It is not just the word of mouth. It's not just what you say. Faith is what you do. And the more you do it, the more God begins to show up. And before you know what's happening, your heart becomes fulfilled. You become more strong. You be, the reality of the word of God becomes, comes alive. And then you begin to walk. Even in the midst of opposition, you continue to trust the Lord because you have seen him walk on your behalf. The boy who got the $10 after cleaning the room, if eventually goes about to wash the daddy's car, gets 20 and then later baby help, help fix the daddy's two room and got 30. Soon and at a, at a point in time, the daddy doesn't even need to say anything because he knows that anything he does, his father is good for it. We have a father who is bigger than our earthly father. We have a faithful God father who is able to take care of all our needs. The question is, are we willing to do our own part to be able to get him to do his own part. Faith in the Almighty God is not what you say. Faith in God is what you do. The question is, how are you acting? How are you living out? How are you, how are you engaging the faith that you claim to have? Let's bow our heads and just talk to the Almighty God.